We will now reconvene open session for the regular meeting of Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Mosby. Present. Councilmember Starbuck. Present. Councilmember Vega. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Gilda Cordova. Present. Mayor Janelle Osborne. Here. Mr. Malavi, any report from closed session? Yes, thank you, Mayor. The City Council met in closed session on the three items listed on the agenda. Uh, the Council gave direction to staff and discussed all those items, but no reportable action was taken. Thank you. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. On June 19th, 2020, I presented a proclamation to the members of the Black and Latinx Offering Community and Knowledge Block in honor of June 19th, 2020 being proclaimed Juneteenth in the city of Lompoc. On June 27th, 2020, I delivered a video of the proclamation for the Lompoc Pride Alliance uh, for their online celebration of Global Pride Day, recognizing June as Pride Month in the city of Lompoc. And on June 29th, 2020, I presented a proclamation in honor of the Lompoc Valley Medical Center's 10th anniversary of building and opening the new hospital located at 1515 East Ocean Avenue. City Manager, uh, your report. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Let me find it here, there we go. I'm gonna start off with a really good, good announcement tonight. So the city, we just um, sent in the letters and paperwork to the state to actually get part of the CARES Act funding. If all goes as planned, the city should be receiving approximately $536,000 in re reimbursement costs due to COVID. So we'll, we'll keep track of that one, but that would be a, a big help for the city to be able to recoup some of those costs that we've um, had. Um, I was asked also to do a reminder to all businesses in Lompoc that the 1% sales tax that was voted in in March uh, did start on July 1st, so businesses need to be sure to adjust their tax collection, tax collection rates. Um, another nice one is the city's letter that the council signed supporting Vandenberg to be the new U.S. Spacecom Center was sent out, but it was also sent out with a letter in, by uh, the governor who was endorsing our endorsement to do that. So that went out uh, officially to, by the governor. Um, from a fireworks standpoint, we did put out a press release about them just, I think it was yesterday. Just a quick summary of that. Uh, July 3rd to 4th, police received 110 calls about fireworks. Over the weekend, Lompoc Fire had approximately 45 calls for service, which included fireworks and other services, but they did not have any firework related injuries reported. They also responded to nine dumpster fires. Lompoc police issued two citations for illegal fireworks, one of which was for $1,500. Um, police did ask residents to help by sending any of the, the ring doorbells, the video doorbells, showing any illegal firework activity, but um, no recordings were provided as of the time I had this written. Uh, for the month of June through July 4th, they received 272 calls for fireworks, and the police staff, on top of that, received an estimated 300 uh, firework-related reports. The library is um, now in the summer reading challenge. It's now going on through August 31st. So please call or email the library for more information. So far, our community has read over 500 books. However, our goal is 5,000 books. So we do need more people to help us um, reach that goal. Another good one that we're slowly coming around is the recreation division starting July 13th will begin a limited reopening. Anderson Recreation Center is going to be doing passports by appointment only. The Dick Dewey Center programs are going to be phased in, such as church exercises, karate classes, or only using the really big rooms to ensure social distancing. And the Aquatic Center will begin reopening following, the following programs will initially be available in our phased in reopening process. That would be uh, lap swimming, which is required for res reservations required. Um, you can do that on the city's website water exercise, swim lessons for levels five and above, adult swim lessons, parent and taught lessons, private swim lessons. 
Things that will not be open or available this summer include recreational swim, uh, group swim levels for level one to four, day camps, pool rentals such for birthday parties or outside groups, the water slides, the aqua play structure, as well as the aquatic center splash passes. So the lap swim passes will remain available though. And that was what I had for today. Councilmember Mosby. Yeah, um, last council meeting I made a request for five years analytics on the fireworks, what's been going on, how many tickets, and how it's, um, you know, wh what are we doing with our ordinance and do we need to strengthen it? Um, how's it working? Uh, can you tell me where that report is? Yes, I uh, spoke to the chief about that and he said he will have it ready for the next council meeting just with the fourth of the holidays and all the other patrols. They didn't have the time to quite finish it for this one given the everything for the next meeting has to be done by Friday. So there's a short time turnaround. So it will be ready for the next meeting. And it, that'll probably be better to that way we could have this year's numbers in there as well. So Correct. that way we can, I know a lot of the people are anxious about what happened or, or what didn't happen. Yes. Thank you. So for clarification, I realize council requested a report on the number of citations issues and the fines that were collected. And now council member Mosby is asking that the ordinance is itself actually be discussed. So is that an addition to the original request? Because oh, I goodness. had asked for the ordinance to be added and discussed, but at the time it was not agreed to that it was just gonna be the fines and the... That was, I, I was thinking just the report, is that... So are we bringing back the ordinance for review and discussion as well? No. Okay, thank you for that. Any more questions for the city manager before we move on to consent calendar? Seeing none, we'll move to consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and will be enacted after one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussions of these items unless good cause is shown prior to the council vote. Any items withdrawn from the consent calendar for separate discussion will be addressed immediately before the second oral communications near the end of the meeting. We'll open the floor to public comment on the consent calendar item. We have one. You will have a max of three minutes. The number to call in is 805-875-8201. And remember to mute your phone, your TV, or your radio when you're put through to reduce the feedback. The number again is 805-875-8201. And the one item on consent calendar is the adoption of the LPOA memorandum of understanding for the compensation plan, according and approving supplemental appropriations. We'll begin oral communication in the room. Podium is now available. Nicholas Gonzalez, resident of Lompoc. Um, once again, I'm up here. I, I am going to ask that you pull as benign as it may be the um, item from consent and, and have a discussion. Um, I have listened to many, many councils and have, have witnessed heated discussions back and forth on the failure to compensate, to increase compensation, to compensate accordingly. And so I think in the spirit of transparency, it's imperative that each and every time that you have an item related to compensation that you bring it as a regular item and have a brief discussion and then each one of you vote appropriately rather than just stick it in a consent item with no discussion. I think for transparency purposes, it's important to the community to know what you're doing and it's also important that we know what's being discussed behind closed doors when you come to those agreements. Thank you. Thank you. You have three minutes to speak. The phone number is 805-875-8201. Seeing no one else rise and no calls coming in, we'll close public comment on consent calendar and bring it back to council. Any requests by council? Councilmember Mosby. I think uh, what was said during public comment is important. I know I've gotten into discussions both here from the dais about what moved forward and, and what we did with compensation. Um, maybe we could have a brief discussion on this item. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So it's on consent calendar. It is the only agenda item. And then we have appointments process. I look to our city attorney to ask if we might be able to ask questions of our um, HR department and the presentation and potentially still vote if, if that works or if we should absolutely move it off and to the after to the appointment process. I it doesn't matter either way. It's at the discretion of the mayor. I mean, technically, the rule is you can, you should move it to the end of the meeting, but we don't have anything on the agenda tonight uh, other than the council appointment. So, okay, Councilmember Mosby, do you wish to pull it and have it at at after the appointments as a full discussion, or would you like to do some Q and A with? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Are you, are you prepared for a full? I mean, you could probably get by with a number of questions. Um, did identify the, the key talking points on this. It doesn't lose the conversation. Sure. Um, Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Okay, great. If the conversation looks like it's going to extend into a full discussion, um, I, I, I'll bring it back as a, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll open public comment after this as well, just as a way to deal with potential questions that have come up as a result of our questions. Council Member Mosby. So, just for the record, verbally, those people listening on radio and such, what is the, what's the total appropriations? Uh, yes, Council Member Mosby. Um, the total appropriations for this one year um, MOU is $126,190, and that includes um, all benefits wrapped up, including health and PERS, um, so that, that would be the total for the one year, one year agreement at a 2% equity adjustment. So 2% equity, but there was also a movement with the, the pension? So the, the pension, um, the pension is included and the other um, adjustment is the health insurance that's in there. It's a health contribution. So the tier one real fast with the tier one employees? So yeah, so that, um, that's, that's part of this MOU. We started that process in the last MOU. We're working with CalPERS to do the contract amendment and get that going. So we're actively working on that. So it is part of this MOU as well. The reason why we wrote it in here is because we haven't completed that process with CalPERS as of the date of the adoption of this, of this MOU. So yes, it absolutely does include the cost sharing portion for tier one employees and tier two employees. So tier one employees that have the 2%, that share goes to their pension. Correct. So and it's then, not directly to them, so it's an offset, so it's not an increase in the general fund directly? No, it's not. Okay, and then tier Tier twos? two goes the 1%. And then the PEPRAs? The PEPRAs are, uh, the PEPRAs are not getting an increase by the city. However, CalPERS did inc increase that contribution as part of the public employee's um, retirement law. It's called peril, and they just increased that by um, a quarter percent for all tier three employees. And the city does not negotiate that. That's imposed by CalPERS. And that was part of the PEPRA law that went into effect a couple years ago. Okay, thank you. Sure. And this particular agreement for those that are new to this, um, it is strictly regarding pay, pay increases and grievances regarding um, the job itself. It is completely separate from other items that might be found in the police policy manual. That is absolutely correct. So this, uh, this addresses the terms and conditions of employment. It addresses items like compensation, um, holiday leaves, hours, and overtime, um, as well as use of city facilities. And then it also does talk about the grievance procedure that um, is outlined here so that if there is an adverse employment action, it gives you the steps on what that employee would need to do if they wanted to file a grievance against that. It also includes city, city rights. So the city has a right to implement rules um, and we address that in the MOUs as well. So we still retain the right in, uh, to make changes to the police policies, even if it's to the police manual, so that uh, we don't give away that right and, and still retain that as part of this negotiation. Correct, so um, which the document that you're referring to is the Lompoc Police Department police policy. And that's, in, for in all intents and purposes, a living document because there's policies that come out that need to be updated and addressed. 
And so that's where those policies um, get updated. And if there is an ad adverse employment action, the police department policy is taken into consideration as well as the personnel ordinances and rules along with the personnel procedures manual. Thank you for that. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Garcia, our HR director? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and open public comment very quickly on this again, because I know that there are a lot of questions about this. And Mr. Gonzalez, I believe you've already spoken on this matter. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for attempting to speak again. I do know we have some calls on the line. Hello, you're live in the Lompoc City Council meeting and you have three minutes to provide public comment. Yes, I'm, uh, my name is Shondell Malcolm. I'm calling about the, uh, the consent item. Um, part of my question that I would like answered is that I believe there's a $300,000 that's uh, put into this um, for uh, three police officers and that those three police officers are going to be patrolling the riverbed as far as I remember from previous city council meetings. So I would like for that to be clarified um, so that we have some transparency on that as well. Thank you. Any other calls at 805-875-8201 on the LPOA? Seeing none, um, for clarification to the call, the 300K set aside for three officers were not designated as to what those positions would fill. Those are within the police department's uh, discretion, as I understand, and that is separate from this line item. This is simply a negotiation for um, the union uh, pay raise across the whole. Those other three positions were reinstated as part of uh, follow-up budget discussions after the tax measure had been passed. All right. Mayor. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, the discussion on this item has been such that we effectively have pulled it. Right. So I, I think that we should open the public comment again, even for someone who's who spoke on the consent calendar, okay. like we would if we had just pulled the item. Okay. So Mr. Gonzalez, I think, um, wanted to make a comment on the item. Great. The floor is open again. Nicholas Gonzalez, resident of Lompoc. Um, thank you very much for doing that because that was very informative. I would like to see as a resident of Lompoc, I heard several policies and manuals in the absence if they are not um, um, privileged for human resources purposes, I would like those to be made available to the public on the city's website. Thank you. The police policy document is available on the city website. Any other public comment on this matter? Any other calls at 805-875-8201? And remember to mute your phone, computer, or radio when you make it through. Seeing no calls and no one else arise in the room, we'll go ahead and call for a vote on this item unless there are any other questions or concerns. Oh, we need a motion since we pulled it off consent calendar. Councilmember Vega. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we accept consent calendar. Thank you. I'll second. And we have a second. Now we'll call for a vote unless there's any other questions. Seeing none, let's vote. And that passes 5-0. There are no staff presentations, announcements, or requests on tonight's agenda. Now we will open the floor for oral communication on city matters not currently on the agenda. You will have three minutes maximum for each topic and person that comes to the podium. And the number to call is 805 875-8201, and remember to mute your TV, PC, or radio if your call comes through. Again, 
8201, and we will begin with in room. Podium is yours. Deb Andrews, Mission Hills. I was disappointed to see that someone forgot to put prayer on the agenda tonight. I'm happy to take part of my three minutes and take care of that for you. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together as we put on the full armor of God, stand our ground with the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We are strong in the Lord and his mighty power as we work to save our state and our country. We pray for all the Lord's people. Please watch over and protect President Donald John Trump, those who keep us safe, our military, police, firefighters, border patrol, immigration, and customs enforcement. Thank you for this glorious day to be alive in America. God bless America. Amen. I was disappointed when I arrived early. I saw that there was open session at 515 with oral arguments, so I, that was unexpected. I rushed down here and the doors were locked. I spent a good deal of time banging on the doors and banging on the HR window, and eventually uh, someone came. We had a discussion through the glass that the doors were locked at 520 because the oral argument time preceded that. Why were the doors locked? We've been here before when there were closed sessions and the doors weren't locked. The public was allowed to be in City Hall, sitting in the lounge or sitting here. You have a private room where you could go to. Then I noticed that City Hall has been closed to the public since March. You can buy cannabis, you can go to Home Depot, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Albertsons and Vaughn's. But you can't go to the people's house. The people's house was closed to the people in March. It's astonishing. I'm sorry I was not able to be here for a year. I had an assignment and I had to recuse myself from business in Lompoc. I regret that. And I regret that the people seem to be at the bottom of this totem pole in Lompoc. I hope that gets reversed. And we all remember how government works in Lompoc. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joey White. I'm a resident of Lompoc. I'm develop developing a property in town. I first applied for my permit back in July of 2019 and gave a deposit of $1,997. On 2.13, I was told I needed to go to planning commission and pay another $55.89 because the building exceeded 2,500 square feet. I argued why I needed to do this because it's only 2,100 square feet and 700 square feet was covered parking and that is non-habitable. <clears throat> From the beginning of the process of getting my permit, I have asked several times on an idea of the cost of the permit, and I could never get an answer. So I based on my budget on a friend's project in Santa Barbara, a 5,000 square foot quadplex with 1,000 square feet of covered parking, pretty much twice the square footage as my project. And in Santa Barbara, his total fees, he paid $25,236. My fees were $76,185. How can you justify $51,000 on a project that is half the square footage in Lompoc? I believe Lompoc's fees should be 10% less than Santa Barbara's fees. We just don't have the money here. We need more incentives to build and to clean up our community. Um, the project, um, it seems like none of these projects ever get finished. They're just pictures of new builds, but it's just empty fields with trash. We need to implement more of Santa Barbara and follow their lead on growth. There is no reason why we should pay three times as much in fees in a project. I could see why so many people 
walk away and so many projects never happen. The city needs to be more upfront with the cost of their fees before people get so deep into these projects. I was never told I had a 15 day grace period when I paid these fees. I was trying to put together the facts after I paid the fees to the permit to understand why it was so much more. With the COVID virus and everything going on, it's nearly impossible to get a hold of someone to collect the facts. Now that I'm bringing them to you today with now knowing how much the fees have been, I am doubting now that I have the funds to finish my project. I am asking you to please reconsider this 15 day grace period because of the unforeseenable situation we have with, with everything going on in the world today. And there should be no way we should pay more fees than Santa Barbara. Look at the return investment on the price of a duplex in Santa Barbara and the price of a duplex in Lompoc. The property in Santa Barbara is worth three times as much, but we pay three times as much in fees. Nick Gonzalez, resident of Lompoc. I kind of want to jump um, on what he's speaking of. As you're aware, I previously served on the Planning Commission, and there was one item that I think that needs immediate attention, and that was a small item that got missed in, in the zoning upgrade, and, and that was the requirement that if you have something over 2,500 square feet that it needs to come back um, and go through the full Planning Commission process. What that does is just eliminates the ability to do simple infill development um, without incurring a significant more cost and, and incurring a significant extension to, to your time frame of doing a project. That's an easy fix. I've seen you do fixes for various nonprofits that are building and are doing different changes to the general plan. So I really believe that that is something that you can tackle. I'd be willing to join an ad hoc committee to, ad to address that. Um, the other item is, is I've been here probably through four cycles of politicians asking for us to revisit our fee structure. I don't know what the problem is. Um, you want to do something for economic impacts, create an ad hoc immediately, gather. I can get you people from real estate, from contractors, private parties that are doing projects now, and we can sit down and the city can put their priorities up front and we can work to recreate these impact fees so that we can start to stir um, additional development and the type of development that everybody says they want. Everybody keeps talking about infill, infill, infill. You have a whole body that's outside our town that stops expansion, but you're not fixing the core problems with infill. Let's get them fixed. Um, the fee structure needs to be addressed, but more so than anything, I think you should have more transparency in the development process um, and it, it's not going to be there, you know, the big developers, they got full staffing, but when you're dealing with the infill that you want and you're dealing with a, with a homeowner that, uh, that is not um, as educated in the process, it would be nice that if you can set up a process to help them and to give them certain big fees that they're going to have up front. Um, I know most of the people that I've done business with would not be able to handle a, a 70,000 fee that they didn't anticipate. And yes, you know that some of the burden does fall upon applicants, but it doesn't hurt for the city to be transparent and, and to work on this and have a clear path um, moving that. So I'd like to see you decide to one, do an ad hoc and fix the 2,500 square foot that's gonna prevent a lot of infill development um, and, and correct that. And two, to have an ad hoc to look at the fee structure um, some fees, you know, that they're charging are not, those, those monies are being accumulated and not being used, and then other fees for like fire and police are almost non-existent, and we need them desperately. So, thank you for your time. We'll do one more in room, and then we'll start the calls on the line. Hello, I'm Wiley Charles, a longtime resident of Lompoc, and uh, I'm here to uh, mention a, or bring to light a situation that I think uh, many small uh, property owners are facing. Uh, right now I own uh, two small, uh, two one-bedroom units and a three-bedroom house that I'm renting out, and I've had Section 8 tenants in it, and um, there are those who are taking advantage of Governor Newsom's uh, 
requirement that uh, to not um, evict tenants who are not paying. I'm owed $6,443 by one tenant, and I'm at a point that's my only income. I'm at a point where I can't pay my own mortgage. And uh, I don't think that I'm the only person in Lompoc who's facing this. And uh, frankly, I'm just asking, uh, what can we do? It, it's, uh, Governor Newsom has extended for, uh, to the, through the end of July uh, the uh, prohibition for evicting tenants who are not paying. And uh, I think it needs to be addressed some kind of way. Thank you. Hello, you're live in the Lompoc City Council meeting. You have three minutes to provide public comment. Prohibition for. Hi, my name is Shondell Malcolm, a uh, longtime city resident. Um, I'm calling again about the uh, requirement of us trying to require the police department to have body cams. Um, I know that in our last city council meeting, there was the, the issue of cost. Um, which is a little alarming to me that we are looking at the cost of body cams instead of looking at the people that it's going to protect. Um, and if I'm looking at the Lompoc um, Police Department budget, I see that we spent a little over five and a half million dollars in 2019 on salary of that amount, we spent almost uh, $1,100,000 in overtime alone, which is about 19% of our budget for the police department, um, just in the salaries alone. Um, so it seems to me that there's a lot of money that can be redistributed or reappropriated so that we can fit the Lompoc Police Department with body cams and that we can stop some of this uh, abusive behavior that is coming out of our Lompoc Police Department. Thank you. Were there any written communications? There were three written communications from three separate individuals. They were all regarding uh, illegal fireworks inside the city limits, and they have been provided to council. They have been put on the table out front, and they have been put on the website. Thank you. I have them in front of me if you want me to read them. Thank you. Again, the number to call if you would like to participate in oral communications is 805-875-8201. Are there any other public comments in the room? Please come forward, you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Sylvia King. Sorry. You were all elected to be our leaders, not to be re re reactive, but to be proactive. These fireworks this firework debacle that we've had the last few weeks, I believe, is the worst I've ever experienced. You're all partially responsible for it by allowing fireworks to be sold in our city. All should have been banned or outlawed any day but on the 4th during a few evening hours, in my opinion. How can anyone police which are safe and which are illegal. We were lucky to only have had some dumpster fires, but our people with PTSD, with heart problems, and our pets have been terrorized, and some died as a result. They're now on your consciences. Again, as leaders, City Hall and our Chamber of Commerce when they are open, are the first thing visitors and prospective business people see when they come here to try to do business. Outside City Hall, a field of weeds where our pool was, empty flower boxes in the courtyard, 
and reeds all around City Hall, three feet tall reeds around Chamber of Commerce, how do we pretend to be the city of the arts and flowers when all of it, all it shows is neglect and no one seems to care? With all of the city employees in this building, including all of you, can't we muster up a volunteer force to beautify this area maybe once a month if we can't afford to pay for the upkeep? Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, dear uh, Ms. Mayor, Councilman, and Councilwoman. I thank you for your service to our community and to your constituents. I know you don't have an easy job. Uh, sometimes, you know, we as your constituents can get pretty hard on you because we get passionate about our opinions and requests. Nevertheless, you have the responsibility of making decisions that affect our very lives. I'm here representing ministries and nonprofit organizations participating in the legal safe and sane fireworks program, not the ones that go up in the sky that are illegal, the ones that we have sanctioned saying this is okay once a year um, on July 4th. We would like to make a plea. It is my understanding that there is an arrangement in which a percentage of our profits from the previous year is submitted to you for, purpose, for the purpose of hosting the annual fireworks show the following year. And since there was no annual fireworks show this year and the funds from the previous year are still there, we would like to plead with you to allow us to keep at least half of what was submitted this year. This way we get a little help and you still have the funds from last year and a little bit more from this year. This COVID season hasn't been easy for everyone and we could all use a little help. Every one of the ministries and organizations participating in this program serve the people of this community in some way, shape or form. You know, and due to the COVID, we've also not been able to have much fundraisers. So we only had this fundraiser practically is all we've had all year and who knows what's, what's, what's gonna happen after this. Um, but I just, I would like to close by saying we are co-laborers with you, you serve the community, we serve the community, and so we would plead with you to please consider us and strengthen our hands. Thank you. Good evening, Council. John Lynn Lump of Resident. So this evening, the Council is, uh, and for the past weeks, has received similar comments to what I heard as mayor back in 2012. There had been a particularly bad year with illegal fireworks lasting weeks. And then there were also the safe and sane fireworks purchased in Santa Maria that were shot off on the 4th. Uh, it's really difficult to tell the difference sometimes. So I asked the police department about enforcement and they said we needed a better ordinance and money for enforcement. Then I talked to the fire chief and I found that there had been two fires in the past 30 years caused by fireworks, both by illegal fireworks, firecrackers as a matter of fact. Talking to the fire chief in Santa Maria, Arroyo Grande, and Templeton, the Templeton Rural Fire District, which actually sells the fireworks, only a small number of fires had occurred, and again, they were all from illegal fireworks, in particular firecrackers and skyrockets that failed to explode and came back to earth. So we also had a $30,000 annual funding shortage for the stadium fireworks show and at that time the recreation staff, the mayor and the city council went out and raised that money so that we could have the show. So all of that created the current plan with the fireworks companies providing $10,000 per year for enforcement. Um, but that enforcement program has not been effective, just being honest, not taking anything away from our current chief, and I apologize for him. I hadn't had a chance to talk to him before the 4th and give him some thoughts. And this year, with everybody locked up, we had a particularly bad year again, as we did in 2012. But there was some good news. This year, there were about 7,000 fireworks purchasers representing about 30,000 Lompokians. 
that enjoyed safe and sane fireworks principally on July 4th. I'm sure a few sparklers went off on other evenings. That will generate about $60,000 for the fireworks show. That's nearly double the usual amount. So with regard to the prior speaker, if you gave half back, you'd still get what you normally get. In addition, the 1% sales tax, which kicked in in the middle of this, generated about $6,000 in sales tax. Illegal fireworks are still the same challenge, and the fireworks industry has a consultant that works with the state fire marshal who is available to us at no charge to develop an enforcement plan, and I hope we will take advantage of it. Thank you. I believe, well, come on, and then we'll do a call, because I believe I heard the phone ring a couple of times. Okay. Bill Babcock, Lompoc resident. This is kind of a question, uh, more than a statement. Uh, I heard what John said, and uh, he kind of elucidated a point. It seems like <clears throat> fundraising is more important than perhaps safety in some elements. The thing that comes to mind to me, I own property on South H, and those stone pines look really nice on a postcard, really nice advertisement, everybody loves them. They're trimmed back, and they look really good right now. All it would take is one errant fireworks into those trees. And there's no way in hell that our fire department's gonna shut it down unless they're there in a minute. And that's about what it would be. So I'm, I'm really asking, questioning you guys. <laughs> Do you think accidents can't happen? Oil spills happen all the time that, oh, we've got it covered. But what the hell would we do if, if we lost trees and we lost houses and we lost lives over 30 or 60 or even $100,000? If anybody has a comment back, I'd sure like to hear it. I think other people would too. You know, as a property owner, I think that an answer is due. Where is the importance here? You represent property owners that are trying to develop something in town, or, <laughs> or, <laughs> Mr. Mosby, <laughs> council member, do you have any? I'm any sorry, we back? don't. This is public comment, so it's a one way. Only we one way. We don't. Okay. We don't engage during this time. Okay. Break. Well, I thank you very much. Uh, that's my concern. Thank you. We'll go to the phone lines. You're live in the Lompoc City Council meeting. You have three minutes to provide public comment. Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Um, since the fireworks show that happened this year in Lompoc, um, or, you know, either at the high school or wherever it was going to be, I don't see what the difference is if they're illegal or legal. At least the illegal fireworks, majority of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, they go off in the air, where the safe and sane, they go off on the ground and could possibly still start a fire either way. I feel that as long as fire trucks don't have to come out and put out any fires due to illegal fireworks, then I don't see the harm. Okay, yes, small, small animals do get scared, and I, am, <clears throat> excuse me, and I am aware that there is a noise ordinance at 10 p.m. I have two small animals, and yes, they, are getting, they, they were getting scared, but at the same time, this only happens one day out of the whole year. Due to COVID, um, I understand that people have been lighting off fireworks because um, people are bored. The last illegal firework that I heard on 4th of July was about, uh, I don't know, I think about 1.30, 1, 1.45 in the morning. I just thought that was ridiculous to have, you know, go off at that time of the morning. And whether it's an illegal or legal firework, there's no guarantee that the firework is going to happen. Thank you very much.
Hello, you're live in the Lompoc City Council meeting. You have three minutes to provide public comment. Yes. Yes, this is uh, Ben Hill, resident of Lompoc. This year's uh, fireworks, they've just been going off in my area for the last three months. So it's, it's, there's truck drivers that have to get up in the morning and do jobs where we have to drive all day. If we can't sleep at night because there's fireworks, dogs are getting scared, there just really needs to be something done about it. We can't keep going on like this. That's all I have to say. Any other phone calls? Any more in-room comments? Please come forward. The number is 805-875-8201, 875-8201. Hi, good evening. My name is Donna Rathbun, and with the exception of four years where I was active duty, I've been a Lompoc resident since 1972. Uh, about 14 years ago, my husband and I adopted a little girl from the base, from a military family. And she was about 80 pounds and was the love of our life. And like most of us, she was getting older as a dog and crankier. And the fireworks literally scared her to death. We had to put her down because she was peeing on the floor and she had never done that. The fireworks on the west side of town are not safe nor sane. And we had to make the difficult choice to literally kill our dog. Now, she's a dog, and I know that people don't always care about animals like I do. But we live near Vandenberg Air Force Base. There are several retirees in the area, military and DOD civilian, as am I who have PTSD, real PTSD. And the bombs that were going off on the west side of town were not safe and nor sane. They were loud. I have neighbors across the street who are in their mid 80s and they told me if there were anywhere that they could go and afford to go, they would move. These are residents who've been in, our, in, our, in Lompoc for five generations. They're not people who just, you, you want to leave, you want them here. About a year ago, one of our representatives, I won't name his name, <laughs> but he called Lompoc the armpit of Santa Barbara County. And I was mad. I thought it was insulting for an elected leader to say that. He did apologize later. But the longer I think about that, his comments, the comments that we have from the people here, comments from people over the phone, we are living down to that comment. And we can't do it anymore. So I would like to request that we put the fireworks, illegal or legal, on it, the agenda so that we can do an ad hoc committee, a task force, whatever you want to call it, to engage all of the members that are here, the ones who are calling in, with you because I'm not saying it's your fault and your problem. It's all of our fault and all of our problem. And it's something that I think we need to look into. Thank you. The floor is still open. Please come forward if you plan to speak. Again, if you're going to call, 805-875-8021. Hi, my name is Jim Silva, Lompoc resident, and I'll speak for the south side. It's like a war zone over there. These are industrial grade fireworks that you feel like they're going off right next to your wall. And they go off all times of the day and night. I don't have any babies, but people do. And the pets. So I'm just here to say something needs to be done to support the others who are saying the same thing. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi there, my name is Charlotte R. I live here in the city of Lompoc. I actually live across the street from the fire department. Um, the last two months, maybe, fireworks have been horrible. Uh, I actually seen something on the news where someone did strike a vehicle with fireworks and blew it up. I think what we're hearing and what we're dealing with is truly unnecessary. It actually goes on until after midnight. I was really surprised. Maybe they have or haven't, but if they have, they would have gotten involved, and that's the fire department. I'm right there in the neighborhood, and residents have continued to use fireworks. Uh, people have to get up early, go to work in the morning. Um, pets have been named, et cetera, et cetera, people with PTSD. Um, I think maybe possibly it would be wise or put in a request to, uh, there's a word for it, um, I'm going to say ban fireworks. Um, might be a little bit of a stronger word, but if we could see something possibly happen with the fireworks here in our city. Secondly, real quick, I spoke to an individual today about Lompoc Police Department. And it has to do with phone etiquette. And phone etiquette with this individual was not used. In fact, this individual called the police department uh, on the uh, non-emergency line, was actually patched over to another individual, and actually wanted to sit an appointment with the chief. And this individual, um, this um, individual that was spoken to, uh, stated what the person needed and the officer refused and so the individual said hey well what is your name and the officer refused to give his name uh, once i was told i thought it was very unprofessional we are calling a business everyone deserves respect and courtesy when calling a business just like when you're offering a service or you go into a walmart or Macy's, wherever you may go, you're expecting a certain amount of service and courtesy uh, to be given, because after all, uh, you're offering that services, and I'm coming in to purchase from you and to buy, and I want to be a satisfied customer. Well, this individual was not satisfied today, and I am only asking, because this goes back to phone etiquette, it's maybe that can be looked into. Maybe some conversations can be had with the police department, and it's not all police officers. Thank you. Did I hear another call? Hello, you're live in the Lompoc City Council meeting. You have three minutes to provide public comment. Hello, my name is uh, Benjamin Pete. I'm a Lompoc resident, uh, born and raised, and I just wanted to get back to the point of development in Lompoc. I just wanted to uh, talk about how we have all these empty buildings and all these, you know, halfway built buildings different, uh, like the gas station by McDonald's that has been vacant for who knows how long. And uh, all the, you know, the maintenance and the police not having funding to um, uh, enforce the fireworks and different things that are causing a lot of um, problems in the town. I just wanted to restate that if we made a little bit more opportunity in this town for people to be able to build and develop and start it in, in the inside and work their way out, we'd be able to uh, have more tax money for these things to get done, like funding the police and taking care of the weeds in front of City Hall. Thank you. Any more in-room comments? Please come forward. Yeah. 
Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Scott Snyder. I've been a, a long time resident since 1973, except for my nine years in the United States Navy. Um, I've heard a lot of people this evening, um, you know, talking about the illegal fireworks. You know, big problem, illegal fireworks. We've uh, heard it for two months. But to punish law abiding citizens that have used the safe and sane because of illegal fireworks is you know akin to it's the low-hanging fruit go after uh, it's not going to fix the problem so you're not going to stop illegal fireworks by stopping safe and sane fireworks sales and as it's been pointed out it is a win-win situation helps those that are serving the community as well as helps the city of lompoc All right I just ask for your consideration there thank you Nick Gonzalez, Mayor. resident of Lompoc. Mayor. Yes. On this one, I think Mr. Gonzalez has already spoken during public comment. Yes, about we're the still fees. on the same public comment but, period. <laughs> but if he wants, he could wait till the very end very of the meeting. Where to there's come on the, the last one. Thank you, yes. I was just looking at my notes, so sorry about that, Mr. Gonzalez. Hello, Trevin Babcock, resident of Lompoc, uh, dear city council and Lompoc community. Um, illegal fireworks are out of control and uh, we need to do something about it. Uh, we need to put the fireworks problem on the agenda, on a future agenda and get clarity and transparency on why we um, have this problem and how to remedy it. Uh, what's in place is not working, let's fix it. I humbly ask each council person to take initiative, step up and do what's right. We must stand up for our rights and stand against those who infringe upon them. We need everybody on board on this. Let's take out the stops, make this a priority and proactively pursue solutions. I propose a task force be formed in partnership with the community to better facilitate and expedite this process. Let's lay it all out and work from the ground up to understand the issues, all aspects and people involved, the regulations, noise ordinances, enforcement, prosecution. It's time to do something. This is an important quality of life issue for the majority of residents and visitors too. Uh, it's a human rights issue, one being the right to quiet enjoy enjoyment inside my home. Uh, the laws are being broken yet unenforced. I want my rights to peace and quiet back. And I want to be free from the distress of loud explosions. It's time to enforce the noise ordinance and fireworks laws. Thank you. Did I hear the phone line ring again? Okay. Any more in-room comments? Good evening. My name is Leanne Nodal, and I've written a nasty letter to one of you or two of you, and that I want to uh, let you know that's not my style. So the fireworks um, have gotten to the point that I'm not acting myself. I'm not getting enough sleep. My pets are medicated every night. Um, my vet, Dr. Gaynor, um, says that if she gets any more medicine, it, she'll just die. And I represent hundreds of people in the community. Have you seen all the lost dogs posters everywhere? And one, I, I'm gonna address two things that people haven't addressed. Number one, do we know how full of pollution these fireworks are? the heavy metals that are in our air and that will stay in our air that cause cancer and asthma for our kids? Why are we fundraising things that hurt our environment and hurt our children? We've got to find better fundraisers. I'm a school teacher. I understand the need for fundraising, and I'd be glad to work with any of the churches to help them do that. I was a very successful fundraiser. The other thing I want to bring up is, do we know the conflicts that are happening between neighbors now? I myself have had an altercation in an alley. 
not good. I'm going out at two in the morning in my night slippers, yelling at people I don't know. I've had to call 911. It's ruining our town. It's ruining it. And we already are seeing, you know, the decline in our parks and, and I just think it's a symptom of, of a bigger cancer that's going on. And I understand that people want to have the fireworks. I love fireworks myself. I just think we've got to find a better way. And the police have to show up. And we're giving them direct addresses, and they're not showing up. We are giving them addresses. It's simple. So um, I want to support our police officers. They've been beat up too much. Teachers get beat up too much. I, you guys are evidently get beat up a lot. I support all of us, but this is obviously a major problem, and I'm not going to stop until we see it fixed, and I want to see this on the agenda. I don't want this put underneath the rug, and, and I don't want to move. I drove for 28 years to pay for my house here in Lompoc to Santa Barbara High School. 28 years, and it's paid for now, and now my husband wants to move. I'm not going to leave without a fight. Please, please fix this. Thank you. That's a hard one to follow. Um, I just want to say I'm just tired of seeing my animals under the toilet every single night, scared, shaking in their bones. Um, I support fireworks once a year, but every single night is just unbearable. We can't take it anymore. We're ready for a change. We hope that you support us in that. Thank you for all that you do. We appreciate you. I know your job is not easy. We just hope and pray that you guys are standing by us to um, put an end to this. It's absolute insanity. Thank you. Seeing no one else approach the microphone and the phone having not rung in a while, we will go ahead and Usually I don't need a microphone. Um, I have been living in Lompoc since there was one street in Vandenberg Village. I grew up with the, in a new neighborhood where everybody knew each other. We didn't have to worry about somebody breaking into our houses. We didn't have anybody stealing our cars. And we knew how to get along together. This three months has been very stressful for everyone. I've had fireworks shot into my roof. They're sitting in their backyard and shooting them over my house. Parts of them are landing on my roof. It's like living in a militarized zone. The, the alarms are ringing, the car alarms. It's, it's unbelievable. I've never had this experience before. And like I said, I've lived here forever. And I wish that we could all respect each other, you know, and I don't mind fireworks, but the type of things that these people are using are dangerous. And we have 50,000 people here in this town, roughly, and we only have three ways to get out. If they light off somebody's house and it catches, how are we going to get 50,000 people out of here? Do you know? I don't. I'm concerned about that. When you look at Northern California and what happened to them, and who knows how it started, but we don't need an excuse to find out if we can get 50,000 people out of this valley. And on a lighter note, I would like to read something that I wrote on a post. Fireworks, the bombs bursting in air, has absolutely zero to do with independence or liberty. It is a symbol of human beings being killed and maimed because they backed the wrong politician. 
Freedom and civil rights has nothing to do with being blown up. Freedom should be symbolized by peace and equal rights, respect for others despite their belief, different beliefs and culture. That's why picnics are part of the 4th of July, gathering with neighbors, getting to know them, breaking bread with them, and watching their children play together, telling stories, playing music, and dancing, not blowing up stuff. Please help us to, to reach a common gro ground with this because it's not helping our community. It's ripping us apart. And I'm sorry. Thank you very much. And I do love Long Hope and I love these people. I just need to figure out how we can all get along. Hello everyone, Brent Gonzalez here, 41 years old. And my little son, I United is 10 years old, he's right over there. First of all, I wanna thank the right side of the law for their integrity and empathy as to their assistance in helping me with the recovery of my old 1996 Honda Civic. Issues that must be addressed one, illegal fireworks. That is not only an understatement, but a misstatement. These are bombs, explosives. I have never before in my life had to feel this type of disregard for safety and law ever. Our town was being bombarded until after 2 a.m. in the morning on the 4th of July. This is not a celebration for independence. This is a terror nation slash tyranny, a terrorist act, and no self-dignity or respect for oneself or thy neighbor. Those who have no limits and have no boundaries must be apprehended. They must be stopped immediately. Please, I am personally willing to be part of any community organization either already put together or newly put together. These bombs continue to this day to terrorize our town, our city. This must be addressed, please. Thank you for this time and may the good loving creator help us all. Thank you everybody. Seeing no one else approach the podium and no additional calls, we will go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to the agenda. Item two is council appointment to the Parks and Recs Commission. We have one applicant, Beverly Kennedy, and council member Vegas has the open position and that appointment would be until 12-2022. Councilmember Vega. Yes, Mayor, I'd like to appoint Beverly Kennedy to my open position on the Park and Recs Committee. Um, looking for a second. I'll second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. That passes 5-0 and congrats, congratulations to Ms. Kennedy and thanks for returning to the Parks and Rec Commission. Any written communications in addition to the ones you've already mentioned? None. Oral communications for two minutes. You can call in at 805-875-8201. Again, 805-875-8201. And remember to mute your TV, PC, or radio when you are put through. The floor is now open in the room for oral communications, final of the night, two minutes is your time limit.
Joey White, resident of Lompoc. I'm just hoping uh, you guys can reconsider this 15 day grace period on these impact fees in this uh, time of circumstance with the COVID virus and everything. And just, I can't believe that how city of Lompoc were paying three times as much in fees in Santa Barbara, just it's very cost prohibited. And that's why I feel like we have all these projects that are just pictures of projects that never get done. And they're just empty fields with trash because once the people get the, the price tag, what it costs to do something, they figure out it's three times as much as what it costs in Santa Barbara. They're just going to go down to Santa Barbara and they're not going to do anything here. And that's why nothing ever happens. We need to fix this. Thank you. Nicholas Gonzalez, resident of Lompoc. I'm going to read fair market section eight housing rents as they stand presently for Lompoc. A studio, uh, 1,502. A one bedroom, 1,752. A two bedroom, 2,073. A three bedroom, 2,766. And a four bedroom, 3,186. That's actually the average. They have a starting that goes a little bit above, a little bit of below and includes utilities. I think it's imperative that we reevaluate if we are serious about infill housing, the fee structure, the permit submission process, and the planning process and streamline them as much as possible. We have not kept up with housing demand at all and it's evidence in what rents are. You can go back and look at these rents for the previous years and see how dramatically they are increasing. Uh, we need to do something. Santa Barbara has implemented a uh, program to help build smaller units, not small houses, but smaller units that target, um, but stay market, and that's important. We want to keep and retain market housing where you collect taxes and where you collect revenues uh, that is more affordable. Um, the ADU is a perfect example if you can even streamline that because that provides a unit probably less than 50,000. Most housing developers that are nonprofit are building in excess of 400,000 or 300,000. So I, I plead with you, start the uh, committees ad hoc, bring it up as an agenda, but we need to do something to help facilitate this uh, running crazy of the rents, thanks. The number to call is 805-875-8201, and you will have two minutes on oral communication. 805-875-8201. Are there any additional in-room comments? Seeing no calls and seeing no additional in-room comments, we will close oral communications and bring it back to council comments, meeting reports and requests. And we will begin with council member Vega. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like the community to know we do listen and we are listening to the outreach and the disrespect I believe that's being handed to our community because of the people that are firing illegal fireworks. I do agree that these are out of bounds and we need to support our law enforcement efforts and bring them in together to see what solutions we have so that we can uh, get some other ideas on how they would like us to help them resolve the issues uh, instead of having it all over town, all over uh, all times of the night, all times of the day. Uh, I think it's so widespread because the areas are uncontrolled and it's throughout the whole city. Um, so I am looking for ideas and solutions from the fire chief and the police chief. And I look forward to hearing any other solutions to address this issue because the safe and sane uh, are not the problem. The problem is the illegal fireworks throughout this nation are running rampant, uh, rampant. And we need to control what's happening in our city and we need to have the respect of the people that live here. Um, so thank you so much for all your comments. Councilmember Cordova. 
Um, I have a couple of comments that I want to make. Um, in regards to the illegal fireworks, um, I, I wrote down a few points that I do want to address, and I want to see if Council Member Mosby is open to um, perhaps uh, changing his request. I know that he requested a report to be brought back to the Council already, but I would like to see that report include um, the funds that were that have been allocated for the enforcement of the illegal fireworks because when i when i've been when i started getting feedback from our residents about this issue um i inquired about well what are we doing and you know i was told that well it's hard for us to enforce it because we don't have enough uh personnel and also because when we have cited people I was told, well, it goes, you know, when it goes before a judge or it goes to um, the courts, it gets thrown out. Of which, um, after doing my homework, I've found that um, both of those things can actually um, are different from what is was adopted into our ordinance. I understand that there is funding available, so I would like to know where is that funding going and why are we then telling our residents that we can't police this or we can't um, do something about it when there is some funding out there that has been collected or that is being collected. So I, I, I want to give um, us the opportunity to address those concerns because I think that it's very important. Our residents are crying out for an answer and I would hate to see conflict within our, our neighbors and our communities. And also, um, so if Mosby, if, if uh, Council Member Mosby is open to that, I would like to see that come back. Um, I agree with Council uh, Member Vega's um, comments about separating the legal from the legal fireworks. I think that it's important for us to identify um, that illegal fireworks are different. It is much more impactful. It does have a negative, a very negative impact on our residents, their pets, um, people with underlying medical conditions, whether it be PTSD or even anxiety. Um, and um, there's a level of escalation of violence that is going on. Um, so I, I would like to see those separately, and I think that if we start enforcing our actual ordinance, we can deal with the illegal portion of it. And if we review, um, Mayor Osborne just asked earlier if, if she could get a review, and I know she asked for it before too, of the existing ordinance, why don't we do that? Maybe we need to look at the whole thing um, and allow that conversation to take place. So that, that's the first item that I have, and I wanted to know if Council Member Mosby would be open to that, to adding that to his report, or if I need to issue a second, I guess, request and get support from the Council on that. Council Member Mosby. I, I believe that was part of the analytics I asked for, was how much we spent, what's going on, how many we've done. So I believe that's already there. And without getting into discussion, I, the things I like to do is I like to study and see what's going on first I agree. before I go to the next decision try to find out where the problem is. So that's why I asked for this for the first. I agree. Test. I just didn't see it uh, clearly spelled out as um, the actual funding portion, but if that's included and that's what we're gonna get, I'm completely fine with that. Um, what about a review of the actual ordinance as, as we have it now so that we can, if there's nothing to change, then there's nothing to change, but I think having the discussion. Um, I may, Mayor, <clears throat> we'll jump. For the first part, yeah, we'll have included all of the, how many citations, you know, going back so many years, what's the enforcement been, how much has been collected, how much has been spent, we'll have all that into the report. But that's just on the report side, not the, the ordinance part. Okay. Um, the second part that I wanted to bring up is, um, I've asked about the impact fees twice now since I've been on council and I keep being told that it's coming, it's coming. I'm looking at the um, proposed future agenda items and I do see that it's coming. Um, but I, I wanna make sure that we are addressing um, these concerns. Um, businesses, they being business friendly to me, and I've said this before, is not about waiving fees. It's not about not collecting what we need to collect and, and, and do our cost recovery. But it's for me, it's about creating a clear path um, and assistance for our businesses to be able to either have development or open new ownership or operate their businesses. So as a community, I feel that we need to be transparent. And I have said that before, that why can't we have a clear, why can't we provide our developers a clear picture? I've been on the other side of that. I've, 
I've been at City Hall where it's like, I'm sorry, we, don't, we can't calculate that for you right now. And then we get called and said, well, it's gonna be 100,000 more, or it's gonna be this much more because we forgot to add this or we forgot to add that. That, that is very frustrating. And it's very hard for someone putting together a development budget or even to open up a business and having to do renovations or tenant improvements to know how to budget themselves if they don't have a clear picture of that. Um, and the other side of that coin is, is that it's hard to do that as staff, for staff it's hard to do that when there's not enough people to do it. So if we don't have people in economic development or we don't have people that are able to provide these services to our residents, that's where I kind of get frustrated because we keep cutting ourselves and every budget season we cut ourselves and we think, oh, it doesn't impact because you know, we, don't have, we don't have much going on was what I heard in the last budget season. So it doesn't matter if we take this person off the payroll. Well, it does matter because we're impacting future development for Lompoc and we're not allowing ourselves an opportunity to really grow. So I would like to see the street impact fees come back but I would like to also add to that that we are actually providing a clear picture as much as possible to our residents or to our business and development community when they come to the counter that they have a clear picture of what they're going to be paying for. So on the impact fees, Mayor and Council, um, Dean, you had a timeline? Yeah, if you can. Well, you know, first, I apologize for how long it's taken. A lot of it was the COVID issue, not the consultants team not, not willing to come here. Um, if I could, I'm going to drag this to Christy. If I could, I would like to put on the, the planning, ne the next one tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. So the next one will be August 12th. Yeah, we have a meeting tomorrow night for the planning commission. So it'll be too soon for that one. But August 12th, I'd like to invite everybody to look at the, the development impact fee study. Um, like I said, it's been done. It's been done for quite a while. I've been itching to bring it back. So that'll be the day that it comes. It'll go to the planning commission first, so they can look it over. I encourage all you guys to look it over. If you want to adjust the fees, this is your time. For me, more than adjusting the fees, obviously we're going to review the fees. But for me, more than adjusting the fees is actually creating a business-friendly environment where people can come into City Hall and know, ex get the information off the cuff the first time, or at least the second time they come into City Hall. Um, because throughout the project, there, there are constantly, and again, having experienced it myself, there are constantly changes in the amounts of what you pay and what you owe up until the day that you actually pull that permit. There, uh, I've, I've had it happen to me where, where it's like, well, you, actually, we forgot to add this, so now you owe this. Mm -hmm. That is what business friendly is to me. How do we figure out from start to finish being able to give developers and business um, people that, that, uh, that knowledge up front as much as possible. And, and I, this Mayor and Council, if I may, I do agree, and part of it is um, some of our old systems we found out just recently with a new building official and our new planning and our permitting tech that we found out some of the systems we have don't do the calculations, and so as they went back trying to improve the process, they did find out that there was errors in the old system, so we're looking at a new one for that one. We're also talking with our community development director of creating a, a matrix, type, matrix type of process that will be able to allow a person online or whatever to pull it up and say, okay, it's gonna be 2,200 square feet, has these different transportation, water, sewer. They'll get a, a much better, much faster um, idea of what the cost is, but that one is in process. But one of the big ones that we've come across is the older, just like our old finance system is now being improved. We just recently found out how um, antiquated because when people leave, there wasn't that oral history passed down that you're supposed to do this, calculate it, and then put it back in the system because they assumed the system was calculating the different pieces. So, May Mayor and Council, if we're getting into a little oh. bit too much of a discussion of something that's not on the agenda. So if you want to bring this back for a discussion, then we can vote to do that. Well, it's coming up in August for, um, and let's have the discussion then, then. I believe the request is if you wanted to have a different discussion about streamlining and the matrix and that sort of thing, that would be a separate discussion from the impact fees. And so that, that is what the city attorney was saying, that if you wanted to make that as a request for a different discussion, because that's, that's different from the impact fee study. 
I would like to have that conversation. Um, I would hope that I could get the support from the council on that because I think that's a very important um, uh, aspect of business friendly for us. I would give you your second, Council Member Vega. Yeah, I'll give a third also, and I'd like to address, uh, we have one of the people in the audience who has a concern, a direct concern, I'd like to have that referenced also in our discussion if we're going to do this before August, because this is July, or at least have it uh, soon enough so that we can address if there is an issue. We've had a former Planning Commission chair uh, actually say that there is an issue or something that was missed, and it's preventing someone from developing their property, and I'd like to know if it's legitimate and what we can do to adjust that and change the ordinance if, it, if there was an error in fact. So I'd like to amend that also. So I think that's a completely separate issue given it's a very specific issue and my first recommendation through the city manager, if I may, is for community development to contact the individual directly to get some clarification on what we may or may not already be able to do without impacting his ability, but at some point bring back the other issue if it is something we need to change in our... Um, yeah, you know, and I'm fine with that as long as the community development director brings it back and gives us an update because there is a specific issue here. Uh, we have a business owner who's trying to develop and provide some sort of tax revenue for the city. I think we should address, address it. So if I can get some support on that, that'd be great. If it is a separate issue. It, it's a separate issue that's okay. very specific. Okay. I, think, I didn't mean to convolute I, it. I, I think that we could give, and when we bring back the fees, we could give that development as maybe an example when we're talking about the fees. Um, but to get into a topic of that specific project and the specific fees that could later be appealed to the council, the council shouldn't be talking about the specifics of that before they see an appeal before them. I got you, and I'm not trying to be specific, but uh, the planning former planning chair did reference there was an error in the ordinance, okay, that caused this to happen and triggers a fee that's probably may not be unfair or maybe it is fair, uh, so it'd be a separate issue without getting personal. All of you guys just gonna sit there or what? So by the city attorney's clarification that when they bring back the impact fee study, we can discuss that particular issue and make recommendations to change the ordinance at that time because of it being a combination of an impact fee and appeal process and could, could, could wrap it into that as an example. Meanwhile, the individual having the very specific problem could begin the discussions with community development and the planning department to see if there's a way to address it prior to it becoming an appeal with us so that we don't accidentally have a discussion about something that might need to be appealed to us. I got you, and I understand. Thank you, Mayor. I just sure. don't want it to fall into the deep hole of council request when we have somebody whose time is of the essence because it's costing them money. Thank you. Council member, um, yes ma'am. Um, I don't know who gave the third carry for the future agenda list, or future agenda item that council member Cordova wants a matrix of. Right, right. Who gave the third? It hadn't been, uh, council member Vega. I gave the third. He gave the third at the very beginning of Yes, his, I'll support that. I mean, which topics, so. Council member Mosby. Maybe I could help bring some clarification for your items you're discussing. Not discussing, your motion you made, not discussing. Watching this progress for multiple years and watching the confusion going with staff where they weren't charging, they were on the honor system with people, it went up and down and this way and that way, then they, it seems like we've kind of been moving around some ways. So maybe just some clarification to your request that we have some historical analytics that go with it. Going back three or four years, what did we charge per square foot then? What did we not do? What are we doing for? Just maybe you could enhance with that, with clarification of what you were wanting. Um, seems that way we can tell where we've been, where we are now, and hopefully we can project where we're going. If that's kind of what you were asking, is that kind of what you were asking? So, I I, I do like the idea of having that information, definitely. Um, what I was looking for was, because um, I guess the impact fees are already coming back. So I, I would think that maybe that would need to be. I was talking about building the building fees that they're charging. 
planning and building fees that they have. Okay, I mean, okay, okay, yeah, that, that, that could make sense. That seems to be where the number seems to be moving. Okay. I know we have impact fees. Yeah, but. I get what you're going with that. Uh, yeah, I would be okay with that. I love seeing um, the, the data to be able to figure out, you know, why is it that we're, that we're not able to give people that, that you know, um, I guess upfront cost. Um, so if I, I would be willing to have that information if, if that's acceptable. Could you clarify exactly what your motion is then, please? So what I'm looking for is, is I guess, a, a report from staff of how we can be able to provide for our developers a, a sheet, of, a list, I guess, of, of fees when they come in of what, how are we going to be able to provide that for them up front so that they're not having to come back or being told we still don't know or we, we, we forgot to add this one or, um, you know, whatever it is. It, trust me, being on the other side of it, it is frustrating to be told halfway or at the end, right when you're going to pull your permit, that we forgot to charge you $100,000. So what I'd like to know is, is it possible for us to give our developers that list up front that says, we are a business friendly city. When you hit our counter, we are able to provide you. Here is the list of all the fees, and this is how they, um, I guess, apply to your development, and this is what your percent cost is, or this is what you can roughly estimate what your cost to be. Is that possible? Yeah. So, I'm... so I, again, I think it's veering into a discussion of the actual item and that we should be very clear to the staff for the information we're looking to have and then be able to have that discussion when it's brought back. Because again, mm -hmm. you're posing questions and asking for information at a discussion level that we really can't have without it being agendized. So right. to the city clerk's request, clarify all the information you'd like to see and then those questions can be answered through that discussion. Councilmember Cordova, if I could just ask, and maybe this will help. Um, a lot of what we're doing is exactly what you're saying, is trying to come up with a process that allows a developer to calculate their fees. I can, rather than go round and round with trying to have you tell us what to do, I can have staff and myself do a presentation to council of what we currently have how fees are currently um, building permit fees, planning fees. Everyone oftentimes says building permit fees, but there's a lot more that goes into it that isn't just the building division right. or the planning division. There's engineering, there's traffic, there's all kinds of fun stuff. So I think it'd be more helpful if we did something more of the development team and the development process in the city of Lompoc, and then maybe you as a council or community members can pinpoint pieces that they think we could improve on. I'm all for that. If we can improve things to make it easier and we have the ability to do that, I'm all for doing it. So um, maybe that would be a jumping off point is a presentation from staff on current processes and current fees and what we have out there now. And Christy, I think you nailed it. That's exactly what I'm looking for. What are we doing? And then if we could add some, I don't know if we could add the historical data of what we've been charging, that would sure, be very Sure, we can helpful. do that. Absolutely. So I will second that, and I'm going to assume Council Member Vega is okay with thirding that change. Yes, Mayor, but I would like to bring up something here. We're looking for historical data on how we got here, but we don't have a comparable for, uh, or I think we should request a comparable from, uh, say, Santa Maria or something else, so we can understand and actually see what we're up against and the difference being, okay? We're over here creating something that we're counting on someone to create. It's almost as if we're making it up as we go, and I'd like to see a com comparable to say because someone else has already invented this. We have that. Thank you, and that's all I want. If I we can do that, moving there. forward Compare. so that we can make the changes, okay? We're going backwards and we don't make the changes. All we end up doing is having meetings and more discussions, and we don't have the change. So thank you. I'll show comps to other uh, neighboring jurisdictions or like jurisdictions as us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No problem. Councilmember Mosby, did that adjustment meet your request? Okay. City Clerk, you good? Okay. Councilmember Starbuck. I have no reports. Thank you. Councilmember Mosby. 
So I represented the city of Lompoc at uh, last month's Santa Barbara County Association Governments meeting, as well as the Air Pollution Control District meeting. Um, the a motion was made when we passed the budget three years ago, our capital improvement plan to be brought back to us. It was slid in the budget book and we would have approved it if we didn't isolate it and pull it out. It's been told it'd come back three years. Along with some of the impact fees, some of the capital projects that are designed and stuff, impact fees have some relation to that. I posed the question, I think it was about five years ago, to the then city attorney, because there used to be a state law that said, I think it was every year, every two years, your capital improvement plan need to be run by your planning commission for approval in case you had modifications in case you weren't planning on building, and if you look at one of the capital improvement plans we have out there, you've got, I think we'd be looking at station five or station six on fire stations. Um, there's a lot of things that are out there and as things change, things don't happen in your city, you need to modify the plan. We're still charging a street impact fee for a third lane on a 1952 North 8th Street bridge that we're not going to build. We never were going to build, but we're still charging that fee. We had a presentation on it, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago about this stuff, but we have a lot of other items that are in there that I've asked for clarification for years. And I still have items here. I mean, it's taken items as long as five years to get back to the council. And I still have some items that, that just roll. They keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And some have fallen off, they got back on, had to go to the city attorney to get them put back on. We get a yellow piece of paper. I don't know if the public gets to see this yellow piece of paper or not, but I think they, they should understand some of the processes going on. There's a lot of concern. A lot of people came forward and wanted us to make movements about cameras and everything else. You need to analyze things before you jump a little bit. I have asked for that, that's hopefully coming up forward. I, there was some good news in an email that w went out there about potential grant funding to help us with that. Um, but you have to analyze things and look at stuff before you move forward. Hopefully the public is still out there. I wish they would have still stayed around so they can see how this process works. You come to the microphone, we can't talk to you guys. We can't answer you. Public comment comes at it. We get a shot at the end. Or if you call us up, I answer my phone, I email back. If you got something like that, get a hold of us. I've tried to make movements forward. Somebody emails me, I call them back. Um, it, it is frustrating how things progress forwards here. The impact fees and the capital improvement plan had nothing to do with the economic development group that we got rid of. There was almost $700,000 a year being spent on that economic development group. And the reason I mention it is brought up again, like we're stopping the progress of the city. That started out with a person who was running was getting 85,000 a year. When they left, it was close to 170,000 a year. It grew like an elephant that was, geez, on steroids, free feeding. And we had to decide, do you fund police officers or economic development committees? We funded police officers. We did some snipping. Likewise with code enforcement. Started with RDA grants at a small little nibble, grew to a quarter million dollar year animal that was averaging five code complaints a week. That's why we snipped it. Do you snip police officers or a division of a code enforcement that went off the charts? So it's important to understand and read the, a lot of the historical books that are out there, the budget books go out there, the, the, the CAFERs that are out there, and to see where we've been and where we're going. Um, I, I, I understand that we've had COVID. I know we're waiting for this capital improvement plan. I can't wait to see it. it it's been a long time going, but understand this, the rest of the council, this would have been approved without any public comment. It was a book provided to us that would have been slipped through. It was in. 
the budget book as a being approved. So it's going to be a long read. Put your seatbelts on. And the public who wants to get involved, get involved. Dig into these things. It's a couple hundred pages. Don't just read that one. Read the one before it. Read the one back in the 60s and see what we were going to do. But we got a lot of work ahead of us. And hopefully it can get to us and we can get through this. I know we had a light meeting tonight. We had some interesting comment. And I know city manager is going to do a good job bringing us back the analytics about the fireworks. So please, the people who are in the back of the room are really concerned what's going on, read this report when it comes. Help us to find solutions. So I attended the tank NCPA and also League of California Cities virtual um, uh, conference. And I also met with the newly formed block uh, leadership and um, listened to some of their concerns. There's some community announcements. The County of Santa Barbara's redistricting committee is being formed. They are looking for members of our community so that we have the appropriate representation. There is a list of qualifications and an application on the countyofsb.org forward slash redistricting.sbc. You can apply by 5 p.m. on August 21st, 2020. And again, it's really important when the census is completed and they move forward on this committee to redraw the lines for the different districts in our county's representation that Lompoc have a presence on that. So please look over those qualifications and if you have an interest and the time um, and meet those qualifications, consider putting in an application. The mother son Luau has been unfortunately been canceled due to COVID, but we look forward to seeing it return next year. And then um, late breaking, this is a, a large amount of customers. Normally it's just a few that are impacted, but tomorrow at 8 a.m. for about six hours, there's a fire mitigation electrical outlet. So about 39 customers will be affected um, between South U Street, West Willow and South T Street. So um, we apologize for that. But again, in fire season, fire mitigation is important. I have two council requests. Um, the first is considering um, ways that we can help our local economy and the popularity of the um, farmers markets and how successful those have been and those are still allowed. I would like to request that we bring back a discussion of how we might be able to implement the swap meet here in the city again. Um, we did have it on city property and I think we could look at having it on city property and being um, an open air market, be able to help some businesses um, reestablish or make a connection with the community for those that have either lost their ability to pay their rent or um, are looking to start a new business if they've lost their jobs or bring back those that were um, active in the community through that. So I think it's, a, it's, it's one of those ways that we could help the community there to get back um, and drive some of that local economics. So I'd look forward to others to support me on bringing back the swap meet. I'll support it coming back. If it's going to be in the same locations, it will be a recusal for me at that time, but I'll support the item coming back. Thank you. I would likewise support. Thank you. And my second request is after a conversation with the representation from Block, um, they had a very good point, and I don't want to do just a proclamation because those are hollow. What I'd really like for us as a community to do is to begin addressing some of the concerns. And in partnership with LVCHO and the Lompoc Medical Center, I'd like for the council to consider a resolution that systemic racism is a public health crisis. And by us partnering with our public health facility in the community, find ways to address it and start um, providing solutions to our community. So rather than, um, a proclamation that just states things and calls out an issue or identifies a celebration, I'd really like for us to have something with a little more teeth. And so I'm looking for support from council for a resolution in partnership potentially with um, Lompoc Valley Community Health Organization, LVMC, to declare systemic racism as a public health crisis. Mary, just to clarify, you're not asking to adopt the resolution right now. You're, no, you're saying bring back a future item. Yeah, bring it back as a future item and work with um, the community health organizations to maybe write something that could move forward as a joint community effort. 
I would be in support of that um, because I do think it's important to acknowledge that and I think in working in partnership um, definitely will help our community to work together and address those concerns. So yes, I support that. Thank you. I'm not sure why I'm giving a third because I'm not sure what this resolution is. So what I would do is work with the block and LVCHO to look at what issues are out there that we could address as a community and support um, finding funding and some action items to help it move forward rather than just a blanket statement saying this is an issue but not move something forward. So it's, it's more of a partnership of proactivity to then out, go out and look for funding to help fund whatever some of the solutions are. No, we're and not going to be the ones out looking for funding, I don't assume, on this. I'm going to say typically if you want it screwed up, have the government get involved, but I'll let you have some reins on this. I'll give you a third. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mayor, did you, as part of your motion, want staff to do anything on this? Because um, only if they have the bandwidth. I do not want to create additional workload, and so that's why I would first reach out to our public health partners in the community to work through this and then bring it back um, to the city manager for staff to review so that staff could provide any input of where there might be overreach or something we need to come back on, but not start with staff so that I'm not burdening staff with the initial workload. Is that helpful? Okay, thank you. Um, we will adjourn the Lompoc City Council meeting to its next regular meeting at 6.30 p.m. on July 21st, 2020.